watching this. It is currently evening where I am. We've had a, an adventurous day today in that we've been introducing chickens to each other and we're getting a video together on our new chicken so you'll get to see our family additions. Today I get to also go to the store and I got some new tools so I'm going to try them out tonight in this video. The first one is a new compass. The one I've been using it has been putting holes in my paper that I don't like and it doesn't have a screw that holds it in place so it was sliding and it would change size on me so I'm hoping this one will create the effects I'm looking for without some of the headaches. I also got some circle and uh, elliptical tool, ellipse tools here so that when I am drawing some of my geometric designs I will have those to use inside and looking forward to seeing what I can do with those as I'm working. Tonight I'm going to do a simple hexagonal design. I'm going to start with my compass here and I'll do the big circle, then I'll do six circles around it and that's going to set up my hexagon. And then from there I'll use my ruler and you'll see what that's going. I've never drawn this before, I just have it in my head, so we're going to try this out and see if it works. Thank you. 
I finished the other one last night. I liked where it was going, and I'll show you here. This is it finished. The center turned out well, and so I went ahead, and because this was a rough one that I was working on, I just did it with some markers and then added a little gel pen to it. Did really bright colors. It was dark, and so bright colors are a lot of fun when it's dark to use. I find I tend to use those a lot more when it's darker outside and it's at night. During the day, I tend to use lighter colors. Just something silly. But I've gone ahead and drawn it again. Really working hard getting all my shapes really nice and even. Did it on some watercolor paper instead of just some cardstock. And so I'm going to take my time on this one and I'm going to do the shading in and really work the color on this one. But I'm going to show now how I did those outer fans in this one on uh, the nicer one. And you see there's outer fans right here. Uh, also, I'm going to show you my test page that I did when I was first working with this sheet. And I'm going to show you why I do it and the steps I do it. And you see I did three on this sheet and they got better as I went along. Um, this one I did it the first way that I've been shown, which I just drew a square right here. I can see my end of my square. You see the corners kind of come at each one of the fan points. And I did the outer pieces first, and it was really hard to then get the inner ones to match up with my outer ones. And then over here, I learned that number one, your first one has to be smaller than your outer corner, but I still did the outer ones first and then came in and did the inner. I tried doing rounded corners down here. I wasn't real happy with the way that turned out. And then number three that I did, uh, you can see the petals stayed a lot more uniform on this one. And on this one, I did my square, but I did the petals coming around on the inside first. And that made it a lot easier for me to keep my outer ones staying in line with the inner ones. And I also brought them all the way around rather than ending them. As you can see here, I did these as a point. Now, I could take these all the way around as a fan, but I liked the way that these created that edge that gave it the star. And you can see this really rounds out the square when you bring them around. It's a cool look. I like the way it added another layer of dimension because now these are tucking behind. And it was fun. And this was just a day that I was, actually I was stuck off my foot for the day. So I sat and just practiced some different designs and came up with this guy and how I liked to do it after practicing. So now I've done it with six sides. My next step is going to be to take these petals around. I, when I work on it, what I'll do is one petal all the way around, then start the second, two, 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 and around three, 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 and keep working that way. It tends to keep all of your sides, too, working in the same side. If you did all of them at once, it would lay out a little weird. Okay, I've added in the fans here now as they're coming out. I'm going to go back in and I'll add in extra lines in the middle and that will help hide these little irregularities that are out here. It'll disguise those, make them blend in, and it'll really help to pull the whole piece together. Now I used my 05 to do the petals and so I'm going to be dropping down to use my 01 to put in those interior lines that just is a Oh, the camera there. Uh, an easy way to, or an easy weight to make sure that it's a little different and it'll 
give it uh, this line a different weight again on the paper. So that'll just be the next step. This one takes a little bit because there are a lot of these guys going around. Now this is harder to do for me because I am really, really used to being able to move my paper as I go and you can rotate it and it makes it a lot easier to make sure everything stays in a nice fan shape as you're going around rather than all kind of flat. So it's not the best for some of my fans, but it's giving you the idea how to do this piece and you can on your own, once you're doing it, you'll see like right here. This should have followed a line more like that. But I was able to correct it down in here. And once I get everything else in, these bits here really do hide well. I've learned with this type of drawing style, the more you add in, the better it gets. So if you're noticing something's a little off, try adding a little bit more. It'll probably surprise you with how much it will add to your whole piece and how it'll bring it together. So here we go to get started. Now I have finished putting in some basic lines. Um, I did this on watercolor paper so that I could use my watercolor pencils with this. So my next step is I'm gonna just really, I'm gonna, um, actually I'm just gonna be going next to my watercolor pencils and my little brush. So we'll start putting in colors. I haven't decided if I'm gonna do six colors or three yet. I think I'm gonna look at my pencils and I will start deciding that. And at the beginning of the next video, section I will show you what we've just what I've decided I'm going to re-record that so I've finished putting in all of my little lines I know it still looks sloppy right now but trust me it's gonna come together uh, I'm getting ready to go get my watercolor pencils and I'm gonna lay that in and then I've got my little water brush that I'll use to pull that color out and just fan it out so that we get this really cool gradient coming on each petal here. I have not decided if I'm going to do three colors or six. I did the three colors on this one and I, I like the way that that moves. And I don't want to be, my temptation with six is that I'm going to end up doing six uh, that will end up rainbow. And I don't want to do a rainbow so I'm going to sit down. Look at what pencils I have and lay out my color scheme and at the beginning of the next section I will show you that decision. Back again now I've got my colors chosen. I'm going to do this one in cool shades with a little bit of warm yellow in the middle. What I'm going to do is I've got four shades for the petals. I'm trying to lay them here so you can see. I'm going to do purple here then this darker blue on these two. The lighter blue here with this nice limey green right here. Um, I'm also going to do the yellow here for the middle so it's kind of like a little flower. I am not the best watercolorist so I am still learning these so any suggestions or helpful tips will be very welcome in the comments as I am still working on this but I figure these pieces are great practice pieces to start learning and getting a hang of it and feeling it so and plus if I mess up with my these, I can always go back in and work a little bit with my color pencils on top of it. I use the Koinors here, and so they are color matched to my regular color pencils as well. So works out well that I can kind of come in later if I need to and do little touch-ups here and there. So I'm gonna speed this up. You're gonna see the basics that I'm doing. 
So I'll just be coloring in down here where it's shadowed and then just pulling that color out. I've got my nice little water brush right here. Sakura, I love this guy. I've used it a little bit. Um, I had a great fun on the piece that I did with it. I was like, wow, how did I ever get along without this before when I was trying to work with watercolor pencils? So if you do not have one, I strongly recommend getting one.
finished the watercolor. If you were doing one of these at home too, you could add more color if you wanted, but I like the way that this kind of now has turned these. Kind of coming up so you feel like this is lower in and it's coming around. Uh, I'm waiting for it to dry right now, and once it's dry, I'm gonna hit it with some fixative. Uh, then I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna do some gray chalk around the outside. I'm trying to practice a bunch of different media right now, and chalk is another one that I need to fix or practice. So I'm going to practice it on this because that's the fun of doing these pieces is I get to work on work on the areas in which I'm learning. I am happy with these colors. If you can see the way I've made them work to each other and then back around. Um, interesting to use four colors when you have six spots, but I think it creates a neat effect to where you're slowly working around rather than jumping. So that works in your typical rainbow order. Again, all cool colors except for that little hint. And it is just the slightest hint of a warmer yellow in that middle. Um, You'll even barely notice that it's a warm color because again, being yellow, it is a less intense color. If I had hit that with orange, it would go, hey, look at me, or red. <laughs> but because I did it with the yellow, it's real soft in there. Also with the fact that this is a limey green coming in as well, keeps it from being so, hey, look at me. I will be back once this is dry and I've done my fixative. Back again, my husband's trying to weight down my paper, but these are just going to get in my way. I know you think they're fun. <laughs> they're my little Mother's Day presents. I got Batgirl, Wonder Woman, uh, Supergirl, and Harley Quinn little figurines. And while it's a great idea, I'm going to need to be working around that. And that is not going to be fun as I have to keep trying to do this. So. What I'm getting ready to do here is I've got some chalk pastel. I tested them on the back here to decide my exact shades. So here are the ones I've picked. I'm going to kind of work this in right here and create a little bit of shadowing, especially down in here. And it'll just kind of make it pop off of the uh, paper a little bit more. So I've got a light gray, more of a putty gray, and a darker gray right here. And they're going to work together. You can kind of see the light and gray will be the light and dark shades working together for shadowing, and then that putty adds a neat uh, contrasting shade in the gray. I like it because it warms it up a little bit. Uh, it's a fun shade. I enjoy it when I work with that color. Again, don't have to do this with pastel. I am doing this with pastel for practice. You could do this with colored pencils. You could also just do your shading with graphite. Um, you, I could have done it with the gray and the shades in my watercolors as well. I had choices here. I'm choosing to do this with this medium so that I can get more practice in it. Uh, that is the only reason. Uh, typically when you're working with a pastel background like this, you'll do it first. But because I would, you would then have to spray seal it, that would have kept my watercolor from being able to penetrate into the paper. And your watercolor will slide a lot more then, and I didn't want to have to fight that when I'm still learning the technique with that. So that's why I laid the watercolor in first. It's now got a layer over it so I can put on the pastel, kind of rub it out where I don't want it. I've got my little pencil eraser right here. It's from Power of Castell. I really like working with this. It's great for getting in those little bits and pieces and cleaning up your work as you're going. So that's about it for right now. You're going to see it. I'm going to use a, Q a precision tip Q-tip right here. This is the package. Um, you can get them at Target, Walmart, those sorts of places carry them. They're just over with the regular Q-tips. I They work great for this because you've got, a, again, a more precision tip versus your standard Q-tip. And I've shaved my uh, pastels into these little containers. Or people will just shave onto here. I like to just shave it all at once and now I've got easy to use containers that make it easy for me to just, I will dip in place. And have a little more control too as to where it's going. It's not gonna flick in the spots I don't want. I will be working from light to dark on this one because I find it's easier to make it darker than it is to make it lighter a lot of times that covers all of it. If I think of any more notes, I'll either slow this down and talk or I'll just uh, put it on over top while I'm working.
just finished doing the pastel on it now. If you look, it's not that it's a huge change, but it's almost like you have an Instagram filter on it in real life. That is all you're basically creating with this. I didn't want it to be a hard shadow. I just kind of wanted it to sink into the page a little bit. And this helps take this white background and just sit, put this actually on it, not have them as two separate pieces. It's not a huge giant uh, shadow. Like I've got a great light source coming in from one direction. If you look, there is no set light source other than directly above coming down. That's all I went for. I didn't want to have to try to think, okay, if I've got a light source here, it's going to shine this way, and now I've got to do my uh, light and darks accordingly and try to get that figured out. Kept it simple. I am happy with this. Uh, there's no reason that you couldn't go back in, just like if you were doing a coloring page, and use your gel pens and dot and still add in a little bit more here and there if you want to add just a little accents and fun. Uh, like I've got my white gel pen here, you could go in and do dots on each one of these or even down here in the base. Uh, I could do dots here to really just add in all those little fun uh, quirky details that you can do. I'm going to leave this one as is. I'm going to call this one done. Uh, so that is it. I'm finally done. It's taken two days to do this video so it feels weird to finally be done. Um, so again, I ask questions. If you are a watercolor person, I would love your tips and tricks in the comments as well as pastel people. If you use pastels a whole lot and have some good tips for me, I would love them. I am learning. You're on the journey with me. If you liked this video, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more. Remember, art happens in everyday life, so be sure you're watching for it. Thanks. Bye. Don't stop.